Here we're gonna look at a solution to problem A1 from the 2002 Putnam. So let's look at the statement. So we wanna fix some natural number n, and then notice that we have the following fact. And this fact is given in the problem, you don't have to prove it or anything. And that is that the nth derivative of one over x to the k minus one is equal to pn of x over x to the k minus one to the n plus one, and pn of x is just a polynomial. And then the goal is to find the value of this polynomial when you plug in x equals one. So here are some hints. So the first hint is to factor x to the k minus one. So there's a standard way to factor polynomials like that, so you'll wanna use that. And then use partial fractions. And then uh, finally, you'll kind of finish this thing off by expanding a series. So now I urge you to pause the video and try this problem using these hints and we'll be right back to see a solution. Okay, so hopefully those hints were useful. Now we're gonna go ahead and look at a solution to this problem. So like I said, we're gonna factor x to the k minus one. So maybe let's just do that by an observation. So this is a pretty standard factorization so we don't need to do anything about it. And that is x to the k minus 1 equals x minus 1 times x to the k minus 1 plus x to the k minus 2 all the way down plus x plus 1. Great. So that's a pretty obvious thing because notice if you were to multiply it out, you would end up back with x to the k minus 1. So like I said, this is a pretty standard factorization. But now we're going to use that to take this 1 over x to the k minus 1 and write it as a over x minus 1 plus... Um, b sub k minus 2, x to the k minus 2, all the way down to b0 over x to the k minus 1 plus x to the k minus 2, all the way down to plus x plus 1. In other words, we're doing some sort of partial fraction decomposition. Now the next thing that I want to notice is we can figure out what a is pretty easily and let's do that by multiplying this entire equation by x to the k minus 1 and let's see what we get. So that's going to give us 1 on the left hand side, then we'll have a times x k minus 1 all the way down to x plus 1. So remember we're multiplying by x to the k minus 1 but we know that factors this way. So this guy is going to cancel when we multiply it to this term. And then likewise, when we multiply it to this term, we're going to have this b k minus 2 x to the k minus 2 all the way down to b0 times x minus 1. Good. Now, what we want to do from here is set x equal to 1 in this equation. And notice that's going to zero this term out. And that will leave us with 1 equals a times k. In other words, a equals 1 over k. Now the next thing that I want to do is point out that I can actually rewrite this in a really nice way. So this is 1 over x to the k uh, minus 1 equals... Uh, 1 over k over x minus 1, but then this thing is continuous and differentiable. It's actually infinitely differentiable at um, x equals 1. So I'm going to rewrite this as f of x. Where f of x is actually very, very nice. So actually where f of x is infinitely differentiable at x equals 1. And so that's actually pretty easy to check from here because we don't have um, an x minus 1 in the denominator of this. There's nothing going on wrong there. And this is a rational function. So it's easy to know something about the differentiability of rational functions. And what I really mean by this is that um, f, the nth derivative of f evaluated at 1 exists and is finite. Well, we don't really need to say and is finite, but I'll put it in quotes just to make it a little bit more clear. Okay, good. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this up, and then we're almost done, actually. So on the last board, we took this 1 over x to the k minus 1, and we wrote it as 1 over k over x minus 1 plus f of x, where f of x is an extremely nice function at x equals 1, and that was easy to see given the fact that it had this nice structure as a rational function. Okay, now from here, what I want to do is take the derivative of both sides, and in fact, the 
nth derivative of both sides because that's kind of our goal here. And notice that that is going to give me the following nice formula. So it's actually pretty easy to take the nth derivative of this. I'll just write it down real quick. So I'm going to write this 1 over k out front of everything. And then I'm going to have a minus 1 to the n and then an n factorial. And then this is going to be x minus 1 to the n plus 1. So now let's talk our way through that. So maybe we could rewrite this as 1 over k x minus 1 to the negative 1. And now notice if I take a first derivative, I'm going to multiply by negative 1. If I take a second derivative, I'm going to multiply by negative 2. So the negative signs cancel, and then we're left with 2 times 1. If I take a third derivative, I multiply by negative 3. So I'm left with an extra minus sign, and I have 3 times 2 times 1. And so this formula is kind of arising out of that. Great. And then we can write this as the nth derivative of f evaluated at x. So now what we'll do is we'll notice that p sub n of x is going to be equal to this nth derivative here multiplied by x to the k minus 1 to the n plus 1. But notice this nth derivative is just this object over here. So what that tells me is p n of x is going to be equal to x to the k minus 1 to the n plus 1 times this but I'll go ahead and distribute it through both of those terms. So that's going to leave me with um, an x minus 1 to the n plus 1 in the denominator. And I'm kind of reordering things here. Minus 1 to the n, n factorial over k. So that's what I get if I let it multiply this first term. And then letting it multiply that second term gives me x to the k uh, minus 1 to the n plus 1 times the nth derivative of f. Okay, good. Now, the next thing that I want to do is use that factorization we used at the very beginning to simplify this. So notice I can factor an x minus 1 out of this, but I have n plus 1 of them. So I can factor an x minus 1 to the n plus 1 out, and I'm left with x to the k minus 1 plus x to the k minus 2 all the way down plus x plus 1, but then that's raised to the n plus 1 still. Good, and then I have minus 1 to the n, n factorial, and then downstairs I have x minus 1 to the n plus 1. And then still I have this thing over here, which is x to the k minus 1 to the n plus 1, the nth derivative of f evaluated at x. Great. Now what I can do is I can just cancel these two out. So this cancels with this. And then evaluate at um, 1. So notice if I plug 1 in here, this is going to become k. So I'm left with k to the n plus 1. So I'll go ahead and write that. And then if I plug 1 in here, I get 0. If I plug 1 in there, I know that exists and is finite. So 0 times something that exists and is finite is 0. Now I've got a k in the denominator that I lost. And so I have k to the n plus 1 over k minus 1 to the n times n factorial. So I'm left with minus 1 to the n, n factorial, k to the n. And that is my final answer. Good. So that's a good place to stop.